Hey everyone, in this video we'll be talking about the ROG Ally and the many different options of backplates available on the market. We'll be putting each of them to the test at various TDP levels and basically answering the questions of should you switch yours out and is it worth the hassle. But before we get into all that, I want to give Ugreen a special shout out for providing their new Steam Deck based dock. However, it is usable with the vast majority of handholds, even though it's called a Steam Deck dock, even with cases. My favorite feature of this dock, though, is the removable USB C cable for data transfer to the device. Gone are the days of useless docks with limited cable lengths. Praise Ugreen and praise yourself by checking them out in the links below. Now for backplates tested, we have two from JSOX and one from Handheld DIY. Now all three of which were supplied by the respective companies. For the two JSOX backplates, we have the first RGB design, which included an RGB module similar to the Steam Deck one they've released before. Now you can either choose to use it or leave it out, and it does include its own separate battery to charge via USB-C. Now for the second JSOX, we have their Vents version, which includes an optional heatsink, as well as a traditional looking more backplate option versus the RGB option. Now the RGB backplate retails for 39 US dollars and the vents with the heatsink version are the same. Currently they both are on sale for just under $30. Now speaking frankly about the included materials, JSOX is miles ahead in the tools department in my opinion and I'm sure others will likely agree. Now moving lastly to the handheld DIY mod case, it retails for $30 on sale currently and is in line with JSOX pricing. Now with this backplate you also get a thermal pad, kickstand and a watch band strap that double as a strap for the back of the ally. Now this is used to hold on battery banks but any bank I have was way too big for it and even in the literature it says not to use heavy items. I promptly lost a strap within a first week of having it. Now as for the kickstand it is there but beyond that eh, it's weak and lacks fine adjustments but unlike a bullet to the head I'd rather have one than not. So the handheld DIY option also comes in purple, white, and clear. If your ROG backplate like mine is cracked and dirty you can get a whole new white one minus the ROG branding this way. Before getting into the full-on testing, and while this isn't a full-on guide or how-to, before doing any of the clear case mods, there is an absolute must-do. After removing the screws, you can reuse them or use the new ones with each kit. You will have to use a new small screw though. We then crack open the device, taking care not to push in too far with the picks, and then on the right-hand side of the device, open laying down, we can see a little optical sensor and a foam pad around it. If you use a clear case mod, you must cover this with a piece of black tape supplied the kits or with just electrical tape. Failure to do so will cause the device to not boot in bright environments as this is a tamper sensor and cuts power when light is detected or the back of the case is open. The only other thing to do is to swap over the back buttons and triggers. Now with the handheld DIY kit they give different size pads for the contact points on the back button. Now due to manufacturing tolerances some users have noticed that the back buttons do not work or are less clicky after switching the back plates. Now fortunately mine are fine and I don't use them anyway however in instructions are clear and simple on how to fix them. Speaking very briefly on the feel of the backplates, while not having tested all of the covers from handheld DIY, I can confidently say that their version has the best plastics when compared to JSOX, with obviously the OEM feeling the nicest. However, the DIY version isn't too far behind. None of them have textured grips, unfortunately. Now one last thing before getting into the charts, going over the whole testing parameters. The ROG Ally was tested using both Hitman 3 and 3D Mark, namely the Time Spy Bench. Now various thermal levels were tested at 15, 18, and 20 watts, unplugged with their default number one fan curve applied to both fans, which is rather unaggressive. After that we were tested at 25 and 30 watts plugged in with my manual fan curve, which isn't terribly aggressive but ramps up decently for temperature. For Time Spy, only 30 watt was observed. Now, the device was tested in an air controlled room at 22 degrees Celsius, and when testing the 3D Mark Times by scores, these were done in a warm bench environment, which means I did not let the device fully cool down between runs. Now, for the runs between thermal averages on Hitman, I did allow the device to cool down for two minutes. The RG Ally was on the latest Windows and BIOS updates, and a screen brightness of 70% was used across the board. Finally, getting into the charts, kicking off with a full and slightly bloated test suite, starting from top to the bottom we have stock backplate, JSOX RGB with module applied, JSOX vents in three forms, one with the thermal pad applied to the sheet covering the SSD and APU, one applied directly to the pipes and APU, and finally tested with no thermal pad or no sheet. For the handheld DIY test, we have similar no pad, no sheet, and one tested with thermal pads. 
Now, because a lot of what is being shown here is eye cancer inducing, I've chosen to slim it down slightly, just by parameters. If I have found the ones that I got rid of were either too similar or obviously just not better. Showing the slimmed down version, we can see that the handheld DIY option did quite well with only the JSOX Vents version beating it by not even half a degree. Now, a stock backplate was at the worst, thermally speaking, as it was consistently one to two degrees higher than the rest. Now, both JSOX backplates did quite well uh, with the heat pad being applied to the sheet instead of directly on to APU being better strangely. Now moving into the 10 minute time spy test we can see that with all the testing conditions uh, the handheld DIY backplate with the pad applied did the best here with the JSOX vents being 0.1 degree behind. Again strangely it does much better when applied to the sheet instead of directly to the heat sink. The stock backplate did the worst here with the temperature reaching 79 degrees average. Now lastly for a preheat soak time spy 3 run average of 30 watts the handheld DIY case blew the other scores out of the water, relatively speaking, as the second highest score was achieved by the vents version without a pad or sheet, surprisingly. The DIY case was the only one to crack above 3200, and the stock version was significantly behind. To wrap it all up, we found that when testing a variety of situations, that both the handheld DIY and JSOX vents versions performed the best when it came to temperatures. Now, strangely, when the heatsink that is included with the JSOX kit was applied to the APU directly, it did worse than being applied to the sheet covering the SSD and APU. However, when it came to time spy marks, the handheld DIY option did the absolute best out of them all, and this is likely due to the metal heat pipe on the back of the case as well as the chonky thermal pad included. Now, this also allows for the APU to sustain temperatures longer and boost higher in my opinion. Now it also comes with the benefit of having an included stand. Unfortunately, unlike the JSOX plates, it is not compatible with the cases, but if you want to show off your name or gamer tag, you can use their customizable nameplate option. Getting to the end of the video, I would like to ask, are you interested in checking any of these ones out or have you switched your backplate up already? If so, which ones speak to you the most? And please feel free to check out the description below for links on where you can find the backplates. As well, if you want to talk to myself or other handheld creators, please feel free to join our community discord via QR code. As always, I hope you all have a great day.